All right, at the top of the page, you have undefined terms, defined terms, axioms, and postulates. Those terms for vocab are all review. Okay? Axioms are assumptions or postulates. We will never prove an axiom or postulate. And then we had our defined terms and undefined terms. So to start with the one, two, three, fourth bullet down, we're going to look at some theorems and we're going to prove some theorems. So theorems are just generalized conclusions that can be proved. Okay? And proofs, as I said earlier in the uh, class, they are logical arguments. So you need to present your proof in such a way that it makes sense from step one to step two. You're using the proper vocab, okay, and that we're using other theorems that we've previously learned, okay. Proofs are written as a T-chart, or it's a, we're going to use a two-column proof. There are other ways to prove, but I think this is the easiest way with less writing. You could do a paragraph proof as well. On the left are your statements. And I give you this T-chart on many of your homeworks and assessments so that you don't have to take the time to make it. But on the regents, you'll have to draw your two columns and label the appropriate headings. And the reasons are on the right. And we number them in order, as you'll see on the proof that's on the back. Now your reasons can be given information. So it can be marked in the picture or they'll say given this, prove this. It can be a definition that you've learned, okay? An axiom, postulate, property, or some previously learned theorem. But they all come, again, from someplace specific. So a definition, a theorem, something we've learned. Remember, when we interpret a diagram, this goes with one of the questions on the test, you cannot make any conclusions unless something is marked, okay? So I want you to take a look at these six bullets, and I want you to just simply circle can or cannot assume those statements to be true based on what's given in your picture to the right. So looking at the first bullet, it says all points are coplanar. And we can assume that to be true because all of the points are within the plane. So the first one is can. Now looking at G, F, and E, so these three points here, can I assume those to be collinear? I cannot assume because I don't see a straight line through those points. Okay, so I can't assume that to be true. BF and CE intersect. So BF and CE. Now you learned ways to note parallel lines in your reading. <coughs> These do not have any markings on them. They may intersect, they may not, but I cannot assume that they do. So this one was cannot. Angle BHA and CJA are congruent. BHA is right here, and then CJA is there. Can we assume those to be congruent, Nate? Yes, we can. Does anyone agree, disagree? No? You changed your answers because I question you, huh? <laughs> um, we cannot assume those angle measures to be congruent because, one, I don't know if the two lines are parallel. We're going to review from seventh grade all the different types of angles that are formed from parallel lines. But also I can't assume them because it's not marked. I don't know the degree measure. Okay, I don't know any measure of any angle in that picture. So I can't do any math to figure it out. So we can't assume that they're congruent. AHB and BHD, these angles right here, along this line, we can assume that they're a linear pair because any two angles along a straight line. And then last, AHF and BHD, that's this angle right here and this angle right here, those are vertical angles. Okay? 
in the table below. So if you have this in a picture, we're going to do two proofs today. So if you see this noted in a picture, this is the statement and reason that you would have to write within your proof. So in the first one, anytime you have two angles that are along a straight line, I know that they're supplementary. So A and B are supplementary. And I know that because of a definition, and that is the definition of a linear pair. Linear pairs are supplementary. The next row, it says that one, angle one and angle two, so these two angles are supplementary. And then it tells us below that 3 and 2 are supplementary. What's important to note in that picture, and my markings were just noting the angle measures being different in each linear pair, is that they're both supplements of the same angle. So if they're supplements of the same angle, what's true about angles 1 and 3, Manny? They're congruent. Their measures are equivalent. So yeah, angle, if I'm given this information right here, that they're both supplementary, I have two angles that are supplementary, and then I have angles that are supplements of the same, I know that those angles are going to be congruent. So they're congruent because supplements... of the same, I'm just going to put that on caps to highlight, you don't have to when you write your reasoning, supplements of the same angle or congruent angles, because it could be different, are congruent. And I don't mind that you use the symbols in your explanations, that's okay with me. You don't have to write out the word for parallel, perpendicular, congruent, angle. And then the last row is very similar. Instead of supplementary, they're complementary. So if they're both complements of the same angle, then they are congruent. So in this case, angle 4 is congruent to angle 6 with the same reasoning. Just instead of supplements, it's complements. At the top of the next page is our first proof. So you can be asked to prove, this is vertical angles, to be congruent on an assessment for me or New York State. They'll just pick two different uh, vertical angles. So instead of using the pairs directly opposite, left to right, they may choose the top to bottom. And they may label the picture differently. But in this problem, we are proving vertical angles to be congruent. That's what we're doing. There's a vertical angle theorem which states all vertical angles are congruent. So in your, you've got your two columns here to the right. Step one, and you number your steps, is always to write what's given. So what's given is that AB and CD intersect at E. So I'm going to write AB and CD intersect at E. And that's because it's given. The right are given first, but you should also know, again, a former argument, that this statement here is what I need to end up with. That's going to be our last statement. So when I look at this diagram, What's nice is that they have numbers there, so I don't have to name the angles based on the vertices. But I'm trying to show that this is congruent to that. So you'll see me in pictures put dots in, in the picture, whether it be I'm trying to prove congruent sides or congruent angles. 
Now, I'm given these two angles along a straight line, and I'm given these two angles along a straight line. Using the statements on the previous page, we're going to use those statements to prove vertical angles are congruent. Note that the linear pairs both share the same number. So in step number two, given any linear pair, is that I have supplementary angles. So angle one and angle two, I'm going to abbreviate, but I don't want to abbreviate on an assessment. I want to write it out. Angle one and angle two are supplementary, and angle three and angle two are. And actually, I don't mind if you write it all out once to use those symbols to mean the same thing. So the number two, that's because linear pairs are <coughs> supplementary. <coughs> So but going back to that previous page, using the statements that we have, once that I have supplementary angles, okay, and even in this picture they're supplementary, and if I have the same, they share one of the supplements, I know that the two angles are going to be congruent for this reason. So back in my proof, I have that they're both angle 1 and angle 3, are supplements of the same angle. So we can state, as we said on the previous page, that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So angle 1 congruent to angle 3. And that's because of the reason on the front page. So because supplements of congruent, or the same angle, rather, in this case, supplements of the same angle are congruent. And if you don't have these memorized, you know, in the next couple days, that's okay. But come to the end of the year, we just use the same statements and reasons. You'll have them memorized at that point. So to finish, um, we are finished. We just looked. We're, we're done with statements, or we have statement. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, which is what we were trying to prove. So we're done. We just proved in three steps. Doesn't, if we're doing proofs, it doesn't necessarily mean they're long. Okay, We just proved the vertical angle theorem in three steps. In this chart, which is review from Algebra 1, it's not only true for equality, but all of these properties hold true for congruence, okay? <laughs> so I want you to make note that this is the same for congruence. And we'll talk about all of these properties in some specific examples. Two properties that are new are the substitution property and the reflexive property. This one says a quantity may be substituted for it's equal, substituted for it's equal. If you're substituting or replacing, that's the substitution property. And you can take a look at the example. It says that if DE plus CD is equal to CE and CD is equal to AB, where CD is in the equation, I can replace that with the AB. So we can substitute for congruence. If I have two statements with congruence, I can substitute a statement with its congruence statement. We'll show you in the next example. We're going to use the substitution property. And then here, a, or a quantity is equal to itself. That's the reflexive property. They mentioned this morning in the second block that back in seventh grade, you talked about angles 
formed by two parallel lines. So alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles, and same side interior. So the transversal for vocab, though, is just this line, okay, that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points, okay? So on the back side, all we're going to do is circle in that statement, congruent or supplementary. I'm going to give you an example of one of these types of angle pairs, and then we'll fill in the bullet. So parallel lines cut by a transversal. In your reading, you should have noted that to note parallel lines in a picture, it's the arrows, either one arrow or two arrows. So let's note that in every single picture that we have two parallel lines to start. First angle pair is our corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, to give you an example, would be angles 1 and 2. They correspond in the same location as far as these parallel lines. So looking at this set of four angles, this is in the bottom left. In this set, this angle is in the bottom left. They correspond as far as their position. Corresponding angles, are they congruent or are they supplementary? Are they congruent or supplementary? They are congruent. Okay? So if N is parallel, note from your reading, this is the symbol for parallel. So if line N is parallel to M, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. The second angle pair are your alternate interior. So alternate means they're on different sides of the transversal and they're also in the interior so they're between so and they're this between the two parallel lines here. So let's say we have angles 3 and 4. They're between the two parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. Those angles are they congruent or are they supplementary, Sean? They are not supplementary. Alternate interior angles are congruent, the same measure. <coughs> nice try, though. So if N is parallel to M, then angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. If they look to be about the same, so for instance, in every, we'll look at alternate exterior angles. In this picture, I have one, two, three, four acute angles. Those four acute angles are all congruent. I also over here have one, two, three, four obtuse angles. All the obtuse angles are congruent. If one's acute, one's obtuse, they're going to be supplementary. So in this picture, for alternate exterior, they need to be on the outside of the parallel lines and on different sides of the transversal. So let's say 5 and 6. One's above the transversal, one's below. They are also congruent. They're both obtuse. So if they're parallel, if N and M are parallel lines, then angle 5 is congruent to angle 6. And then last but not least, you'll see these angles called um, or be named differently depending on the worksheet that you do. Consecutive interior angles are also called same side. So that means they're on the same side of the transversal and they're in the interior. So that would mean something like 7 and 8. This is acute, this is obtuse. They are supplementary. So the measure of angle 7 plus the measure of angle 8 is equal to 180 degrees. If you want to give yourselves a little cheat sheet, is there any room at the bottom here? If you want to give yourselves a little cheat sheet, draw, I'll use these two horizontal lines here, 
all my O's will be congruent, all my X's are congruent. So in a parallel line question, so this is parallel to this, all the X's are congruent, all the O's are congruent. You could take this whole set of angles and slide it right down so it would land on that transversal and the X would land on the X, the O's with the O's. So if you want a little cheat sheet, those angles that are all marked with an X are the same measure, and those with an O are all the same measure. So let's start with the proof. Okay. Proof, start with writing your given. So the given in this, state, uh, this problem, you can write it out in words, but I would just write it in symbols, is number one, AB is parallel to CD. That's what's given. Now, if you're given two parallel lines, all of these statements up top are true. Okay? But what we're doing in this question right here is we're actually proving that alternate interior angles are congruent. We're proving that theorem. When you prove a theorem, you want to use your given postulates. So these we use to prove our theorems. I'm just abbreviating with THMS. So I'm going to use that postulate, corresponding angles, to prove that alternate interior angles are congruent. So I have to look at a corresponding angle to one of the ones that are given. You can look at a corresponding angle of angle 1 or angle 2. If I look at a corresponding angle to angle 1, the corresponding angle to angle 1 would be right here. And given that they've numbered these, I'm also going to number that angle instead of using the vertices. So I always know to be true by that postulate that corresponding angles are congruent. So number two would be angle one congruent to angle three. And I'm going to write exactly what's above. So if you don't want to watch me and then write what's on the uh, board on your paper, just copy down the corresponding angles postulate, which says that if two parallel lines using symbols are cut by a transversal, <coughs> then corresponding angles are congruent. We finish this with two more steps, so it will fit. You just may have to extend the line. So given that postulate and the theorem we just proved, vertical angles are congruent. Two and three, these two angles right here, are vertical angles. They are always congruent. So another statement that I know is angle two is congruent to angle three because all vertical angles are congruent. So I use the theorem, I use the postulate. Now, if I look at statements two and three, I'm angle one congruent to angle three, and two also congruent to angle three. So three is written twice. We're gonna finish by showing that one and two are congruent with the substitution property. So in this statement, it doesn't matter which statement, but since two is congruent to three, I'm going to replace the angle three with the angle two. So angle one is congruent to angle two by the substitution property. the measure of an angle. So on the back, number three. So if A 
is parallel, line A is parallel to line B. Find the measure of TUP. Well, TUP is congruent to this angle right here because they're vertical angles. But in this question, it gives me the measure of this angle and this angle. They're same side of the transversal in the interior or consecutive interior. So are they congruent or are they supplementary? Supplementary. So using the measures of the given angles, I'm going to take those measures, add them up, set it equal to 180. So 6x and 2x is 8x. Negative 13 plus 65 is 52. Subtract 52 from 180 and we get... Well, 8 more is going to give me 60. 20 more will give me the 80. So counting up, 128. Divided by 8, and x is going to be, well, 8 goes into 12 once. Subtract, we got 4, 48. 6 times 8 is 48. So that's the value of x. I need to find the measure of TUP, this angle right here. So again, this angle is congruent to this one because of vertical angle, so I'm just going to make the substitution here. 2 times 16 minus 13. So 32 minus 13. 12 minus 3 is 9. 2 minus 1 is 1. So 19 degrees is the measure of angle TU. P. And let's shorten number four. Let's stop by finding the value of what's our variable y. So we would first identify the angle pair. These angles are in the interior on opposite sides of the transversal. Are they congruent? Are they supplementary? They're alternate interior. They are congruent. So their measures are equal. So this makes it a really easy equation to solve. Subtract the 2y from 5y, we get 3y. Divide by 3, and y is? Because 3 times 2 is 6. 7 minus 6 is the 1. 18, 26. Last one. Find the value of A that guarantees that R is parallel to S. So if you have a highlighter, I want to guarantee that R is parallel to S. You have two transversals here. So you have to look at which transversal gives you an angle pair. If I look at transversal W, I only have this angle right here. If I look at transversal Z, I have these two angle pairs. So transversal Z actually gives me a set of angle pairs. The orange, or W, does not give me a pair of angles. So I have to use transversal Z, and what's true about the given angles? They're corresponding. They're both according to the, trans, or the parallel lines, top left, top left. They're congruent. So I have 3a plus 14 equal to 4a minus 8. Subtracting the 3a over 4a minus 3a is a. Adding the 8 over 14 plus 8 is 22.